I was on a flight, to, I think it was to Hawaii, and it was like 10 hours. And the guy sitting in front of me every five minutes wrapped both his hands around the back of the seat. <laughs> okay. And he was blocking my screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was kind of like... <laughs> and I'm not like a confrontational person, especially I have no idea what's on the other side. And he kept doing it, and then I was like, oh, I guess, and I, I said, well, I may, at least I can get a picture of this for Instagram. Because <laughs> he's like literally these fingers over the screen. And I said, oh, you know, I'll come up with a caption like blocking my view of 500 days of summer. <laughs> and it kept happening, it kept happening. The flight eventually lands, the doors open, paramedics rush on no. and start treating this guy. He'd no. been in some sort of agony the whole time. No. And then I, oh I mean, I ended by saying, but God. there's a happy ending. I didn't post the picture. You've been doing it 35 years. Yeah, it's going to be 36 pretty soon. Unbelievable. I know, it's crazy. And you, Gaffigan and I talked about this on this podcast. It's like, because he's another one, 30, mm -hmm. 35 years. Like, yeah. Long, like yeah. To, to last in entertainment or in art right. in any sphere. Yeah. Three, four decades is, is, is absurd. Mm -hmm. It's an astonishing thing. And what do you think is, because a lot of creators listen to the podcast, like what do you think the key to longevity is? I think uh, hanging in there, not, I mean, obviously it never got too big. <laughs> I mean, I'm fine. I mean, you know, I get recognized in trains and stuff. But uh, I, uh, I think just hanging in there and, and just like finding people who like you, and like, if there's a club doesn't use you, find the club that does use you. And, right. And I mean, I think consistent, I mean, I'm not the most prolific comic, but I do try to write as yeah. fast as I can. And, um, but yeah, I think hanging in there. And also I think I didn't, you know, I, I, I always felt like I had like a, I'm about to break for like 30 years. Yeah, I think I'm about to break big. I'm going to go wide. And it never really happened on a massive level. But so I guess hanging in there you opened for me remember that san francisco yeah, yeah yeah no i i have a not only do i remember it but it's oh. one of the most marked things in my brain because i asked you what you thought of a joke and you were like it's a little bit it was, it was a new joke at the time and you were like it's a little hacky and did I, I say that oh yeah, my god but even to this day i'm like is it it was just like it was, a, it was a joke that was on my first album which is like I don't have a weight problem, but I am the guy who could really put the brakes on an orgy. Everyone would be like, was he invited? Why is he eating a pizza? I don't know why I would say that. It's hacky. <laughs> you were like, it's a little hacky. And I was like, I don't know. I mean, but they, but I, I'm, I've always been self-conscious about that as an idea. But I mean, f as weird as it sounds, it's probably a compliment that I felt comfortable enough and cared mm. enough to say that it was hacky. I think that's a good point. I think that's a good point. I felt comfortable enough to be brutally mean and <laughs> unnecessarily... <laughs> tactless wow i don't remember saying that but you've always been i mean it wasn't malicious and right, it was right. extraordinarily like you've always been super supportive of me even yeah. though when i moved to new york a lot of people including bill burr accused me of sounding like you. yeah i saw the clip of the video where i, know, I did too <laughs> Where he said, what did he say? I went to see Mike Bingley in his one-man show called a, a Night with Todd Berry. Or That's right. Like that. An Evening with Todd Berry. I never Berry. saw that. I mean, I never saw your... I never felt like, oh, Mike's doing me, man. I've never felt that. But I'd heard about it. I did, too. People, people came up to me when I first moved to New York and were like, hey, you're doing Todd Berry. I go, I don't think so. I mean, I, I love Todd, but I don't, I don't think... If anything, when I listen back to my old stuff, I'm like, eh, I've got some Hedberg in there. Yeah, I mean, every, a lot of people do Brian Regan. Yes. You hear a lot of like, eh, you know, the kind of inflection. <laughs> that wasn't really a good Brian Regan impression, but yeah, his inflection. or Yeah. But your, your vocal, your vocal tone is like, how did you find it? Like, I, like I, it's because it is very, it's so one of a kind. I mean, I honestly, I, I kind of hate the way I've, I when I listen to like my first album which I don't really listen to my first album it's not like hey, I'm going to put my first album on and kick back <laughs> a glass of juice and listen to my first album. but when I've heard clips of it for whatever reason it's like I go god did I do I really because I had this whole different way of talking on stage which I kind of I think I've have a more natural way of talking I've got a, I hope so but I think when I got locked into jokes yeah I would do this kind of inflection and this yeah. cadence 
Um, but it was never something, only until some people started doing impressions of me to my face. Yeah. Did I think, oh shit, is there something going on with the way I talk? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. But I've never, I've never like said, here's the way I'm going to talk on stage. But yeah, yeah. You invented crowd work. I invented crowd work and... Um, and then what happened? Also music. I <laughs> uh, so if we can get anything for the record... Uh, I invented storytelling. You invented storytelling. <laughs> uh, that's, I forgot. That. Yeah, that's true, you did. I didn't invent that one. Mm -hmm. I was the second person to do storytelling. <laughs> But, um, no, but clearly, like you got, you were way ahead of the the crowd work curve. You yeah, have a special yeah. in 2014. Yeah. That's all crowd work, and it's hilarious. And now it is like the thing of social media. I mean, I, I, I mean, I guess we could talk about that, but uh, you don't want to talk about it. I do. Well, no, we should talk about. It. I just don't want to slag anyone. But uh, I guess I could slag a concept and not individual. Yeah, I don't. I think I, yeah, I think it's. I don't think. I mean, I. Even though, like, even now I'm on this half crowd work, half jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still like. I feel like I see comics doing crowd work. I like if I do a bar show and some younger comic starts just going. I I start crying. I mean, I just. <laughs> I mean, I don't literally start crying, but I just feel like because you're sitting there like they're talking, they tell a joke, and like they think they have to stop. And go, hey, what about you? Hey, yeah. what about you? What about this couple? And it's like you're wasting your time on stage, man. Yeah, I mean. If you want to be, if you're ex exceptionally good at it and you love, or if you just like doing it, you should do it. But I feel like there's people who think they have to do it. And that's when it, that's what I think is a problem. My estimation of why it works so well when you do it is that you're, you're not doing the, the standard questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, I start with like, well, what do you do? Yeah, what do you do? Or but or I try from? to take it in a different direction. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like you're having like a real conversation yeah, like, with the audience. Yeah, I try to get be curious and yeah, and I also like if someone's not into it, I I back off. I mean, that happened to me the other night in some city where she's like, "I'd rather not do this." I'm like, let's not do this. Though. <laughs> <laughs> let's not do this. Yeah, I respect you, but you are sitting in the front row at a crowd work show. <laughs> Your persona on stage is more hyper confident. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> but like. In real life, I know you on and off stage. Like, you're not a wildly confident bravado person. No, no, I'm, I'm kind of a. No, I'm all, all talk. Was what they. Say. <laughs> I think that's what you're trying to say. I'm all talk. No, uh, no, I don't walk like, the walk. I. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think there is. There's times when I. Yeah, like I mean, I'm sure you've had it too, where you get mad on stage and you're like. I just said something to a kind of a big guy that I would not normally use. <laughs> the fuck did I, what am I, you know, you're just yeah. kind of like getting visibly angry or or maybe actually attack them on some level. But yeah, there is that. I mean, I think you kind of need it to go up there and do something as ridiculous as what we do, you know. Like an absurd amount of confidence. Yeah, or at least fake it, yeah. 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 What are you, off stage? what are you most confident about and least confident about? Ooh, wow, this is getting, now we're getting deep. Um, I'm most, con I mean, I'm confident that I'm pretty funny, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and then least confident, oh shit. I mean, there's, you know, certain, I can be socially awkward, I think. Yeah. Um, like right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is what, the second part of your question this is, answer what I'm is, least is this. About. Is this, is the hemming and hawing. One of the, I feel like one of the things you're known for, and it's the reason why I think when I moved to New York, people are like, hey, you sound like Todd Berry. It's, your voice is so specific. Yeah. And like when you were starting out, who were you inspired by? You Did you go like see everybody? I would go see a lot of people and I would go to open mic nights and kind of watch. And But I, it's, it's weird, I've, I've never, it never occurred to me until at some point when it really occurred to me that I wanted to be a comedian. Yeah. Like I was always m being funny. Like even when I was in bands, I would, they would have to, you know, take the mic between songs and yeah. banter. And, but I never said, I want to be a stand up comic. And then just, I watched this open mic night, of, I guess a few times. And it's just in Florida back then in the late eighties, you could just call up, you know, they have, hey, I want to do your Sunday open mic night. And they go, yeah. Yeah, we got a slot. And then boom, you're a comedian. I mean, you're wow. an open mic or at least. And they would also do the show during the regular, like one day of the week when the the headliner was there also. So it'd be part of the headlining show, the open mic night. So, See, that's like, it's a very different thing than today. Because like, I feel like people ask me this a lot. And I'm sure they ask you a lot, like young comics, like, 
what do I do? There's only, you know, there's a hundred people at the open mic, you know what I mean? In seven slots or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, what would you do if you were coming up now? I don't know. Cause I mean, I know I've, I guess I've maybe done a handful of New York open mics where you're like, oh, I'm performing for 12 people who are waiting to perform. Right. And like one l weird local loner guy. Right. But so, and that could go either way. Cause either you get the, <laughs> like the comic supportive laugh or you get iced out because <laughs> yes. they're just jealous or not jealous or just they don't want to be supportive or they're just like the way I would probably be, which is not laughing a lot. Right. But yeah, I, I don't know how people rise above that. I mean, it's a tricky one. I don't know. But I mean, I guess there's enough bar shows where which aren't really like open mics you still, and what's interesting is you still do bar shows. Like you, I mean, yeah, lately, especially because I was trying to get some more material for this tour, and I, and it's like there's places like I could walk to, go on, and maybe they're not electric, yeah, but they're sitting there, right? And because I feel like Gaffigan's like that too. I don't know if he's still Similar. Is like that. No, I think he is. Or he, yeah, I'll go on. <laughs> yeah, what six people? Yeah, let's let's do this. You know, I think I I think I have that in common with you, which is like. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't really matter what the conditions are. Yeah, I mean there's certainly like doing the bell house when it's packed is amazing. Yeah. And it's and doing a bar show maybe on somewhere in Brooklyn or Lower East Side or something might not be amazing. But if you get if something comes out, you yeah. Know, you fix something. Fix a line or two. Do you listen back? Do you record on, on your phone and listen yeah, back? I uh <laughs> <sighs> If you want to sit here for 30 hours, we can listen to the ones that I haven't listened to yet. <laughs> but I mean, I, it's funny though, because when I, when I first started, I, you know, I used to drive to West Palm from my Broward County home. It's one of the three clubs that I worked at <clears throat> to do open mics. And I would, you know, you recorded on a cassette tape and I couldn't wait to listen to the cassette yeah. in the car. Like now they'll, they couldn't imagine wanting to listen to a tape of my set. Like, yeah. And it's kind of sad in a way because you're just so excited that you got laughs. Yeah. But now it's like, yeah, I've gotten plenty of laughs. Yeah. What's a town that you feel like people don't realize is a great town? Um, I feel like, you know, I, I went to my first trip to Dayton, Ohio. I don't know yeah. if people know have an opinion about Dayton, but I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. I think Dayton's fantastic. And uh, Pittsburgh, I think, used to. I mean, if, yeah, Pittsburgh's great. Yeah, it used to be sort of a punchline for people. Like, oh, Pittsburgh, like, it's like. And then I went to Pittsburgh. Like, this place is beautiful. No, it's great. Yeah. What yeah. about you? Those are two that I really like. You know, I always say like it's. I love Bloomington, Indiana. Yeah, Iowa City. Yeah, yeah. Iowa City's great. Yeah, that's a good one. I think the thing that I feel like I've experienced from touring the country is like. There's great folks everywhere. Absolutely. These, you know, people just think like it's the only thing that counts is New York, San Francisco, Chicago. And it's like, that's really limited. And it's also yeah, inaccurate. And as you said, there's great people everywhere. So you could be super far left. And also, I don't do political stuff. So I yeah. conceivably make right wingers laugh also. Yeah. With my, uh, my cat jokes. Yeah, exactly. But, but yeah, there's nice people everywhere. And you get a crowd of people who like what you do and they're they're like oh yeah we're we're here and we're supportive and yeah you, you by the way got softened by your cat i did i mean, used, to have a, <laughs> used to have such an edge to me man <laughs> you named your cat after me i, I did it's my it's uh it's mike berbiglia <laughs> my cat's name is mike literally named after you first and last name you know, how do you pronounce it is it different oh, than it's michaeline 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 yeah michaeline why yeah. where'd the name come from I, it's what she had at the ASPCA, and I just remember seeing her and with that little, ta you know, little kitten with that little tag, and yeah. I was like, oh, it's, I didn't want to, I didn't want to change her name, and I thought, I was like, that's kind of a pretty name, I never heard it before. Yeah. And I, I didn't want to name her like, you know, Dr. Bubbles or something, or, oh, yeah. that's not your cat's name. <laughs> Mr. Mustache. <laughs> <laughs> little, One of my cats is Mr. Mustache. Seriously? Yes. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh well, precious and Mr. Mustache. Oh, well. I guess we're gonna you're gonna turn the recorder off. Now. <laughs> Things were going well until you insulted Mr. my cat. Mr. Bubbles. This is uh this is the thing we do called the slow round. Is okay. there a time that you remember running away, physically running away from something? Um, I lightning makes me run. 
lightning lightning yeah you know from the sky so you've Boom. seen lightning and jogged away. and run yeah i've run when i'm with people i'll be like gotta go <laughs> and, and then so you know with, friends, who, friends of mine know that i'm i have that so they're usually pretty supportive but um so you saw lightning you're with people yeah they all see it you jog away yeah yeah to in to indoors yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not to, <laughs> I grab a piece of metal and I stand in the street. Yeah, yeah, indoors. <laughs> um, is, is there a song that makes you cry? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, there's, uh, we were talking about R.E.M. earlier, and uh, there's a song called Good Advices mm. on their Fables of the Reconstruction album that fucking messes me up. And, oh, interesting. But there's a number of songs, that, and also Wendell G. on that album. That, oh, interesting. That can, back to back, that... Sometimes if I, I don't know. Yeah, they can, those can make me cry. What do you think? I have a bunch of R.E.M. songs that make me cry, too. What, what do you think gets you about those two songs? Well, it's, it's kind of, yeah, like I don't even know what the songs are about. <laughs> right. quote, like I don't even, couldn't even tell you, maybe not, I might even tell you the words to them. I have no idea what they're about, but I guess it's just the chords and, yeah. the, and the, the melody, and it just fucking crushes me sometimes. Yeah. It's a song by Magnetic Field, Save a Secret for the Moon. Yeah, that's the, that'll that'll mess me up a little bit. Wow. I mean, I've never cried, Mike. <laughs> I, I was testing you. I've never cried. This is like my very own crowd work right here. <laughs> <laughs> Who cries? I've never cried. Real men don't no, cry. I've never cried either. I'm only asking for. You cry else. on planes ever? Gosh, yeah, I have. I'm more susceptible to crying on air, uh, watching movies on planes. People, yeah. I mean, you ever cry at a commercial? Yeah. I did once, man. I was just, I couldn't believe how, it just like, because I've always heard, oh, this Ford commercial made me cry. Like, well, fucking, it's, it's 20 seconds, calm down. Yeah. And then this commercial, I don't remember what it was for, but it was just this guy who was clearly dying, dancing with his partner. Yeah. And it was just like, oh, fuck. Yeah. It crushed me. Oh. You were in, <laughs> you were in Hedberg's movie. I was, yeah, yeah. Which is like almost like a fabled story at this point, the right. existence of that movie. Right, because it's still like, it still hasn't come out. <laughs> hasn't come out. No. It's called Los Enchiladas. Yeah, right? yeah. It's about, and it's based on him working at a restaurant, I think, right. for a bunch of years yeah. as a cook. And then he made this movie and and you're 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 in it, like, I want to say a tells in it, like a, a, he might a, be, a yeah. bunch of, a bunch of notable <laughs> comedians are in it. Did you like mitch directing you yeah it was fine I, I do remember about that i had this kind of funny feeling because i did it i flew to minneapolis the day after i did letterman oh wow and i just remember you having my first meal there in in minneapolis at some sort of not great restaurant i'm eating chicken fingers I'm like it's fucking on letterman last night <laughs> you're sitting there alone and you're like i was literally a guest on the late show with david letterman the very popular show i was a guest on i did stand in jokes that i wrote you're like eating your chicken fingers like alone i think i think that is like stand-up comedy in a nutshell as a career yeah yeah there's a great scene do you see that radiohead documentary no there's one there's it's i forgot what it's called people something with people in it but there's a great scene in there which is really a good sort of show business nutshell where they come off stage and there's you know those crowds going ape shit but they're in an argument about something oh. so they're sitting there and they're arguing while this crowd is going ape oh shit oh my gosh yes it's that's like, great. like it's like it's not even enough to smooth things over that's so profound yeah, yeah it's pretty it's kind of like i mean not that i'm not saying show business isn't fun but it uh, it's not there's a romanticized version of it that well yeah certainly you don't when you see the comedian on letterman show <laughs> you know or or now you know the tonight show or kimmel you don't imagine that the next day right. they're in a they're in cvg airport yeah, yeah, in ohio yeah. <laughs> right. and they're like you know struggling with their bags and one of the wheels is broken yeah but doing those shows is kind of like it there is like this you build it up so much and then you kind of in four and a half minutes it's over and then you're kind of like right, i guess something what was the thing that you've done in your career where you're like, I cannot believe I'm doing this right now? I mean, I can't, I guess 
the wrestler doing the wrestler Do with was, Darren Aronofsky. Yeah, that was pretty surreal because going to the Venice Film Festival. Yes, was you know on my own dime was uh. <laughs> On my own dime. That's a hilarious joke from your special. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I just agreed with your compliment. <laughs> I thought you were saying it's a joke from my special. I missed hilarious, and I just saying, yeah, that was hilarious, Mike. That's why I put it on the special. That's why you're here today for me to say back your jokes to you, say they're hilarious, but and yeah, then you agree. But that was a surreal experience where it was like, yeah, get going in a motorcade to watch a movie you were in. And that movie, The Wrestler, had a lot of hype in the sense of like it was a, it was not only a Darren Aronofsky movie, but it was like the comeback of mm-hmm. Mickey. Right, right, right. Where it's like he hadn't done stuff in a long time. And, yeah, yeah. And so it was a kind of a triumph. Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty cool to be in it. What's the reverse of that? What's the What's the time where you thought like this is just not worth it? Oh, I mean. Just times I've bombed on, you know, bombing, just like I bombed on TV twice. Yeah. Uh, Did you really? Yeah, I would say. Well, one was a Conan, my second Conan, which was had big pockets of silence in it. I just, <laughs> big pockets of silence. I had just run the set like the night before a few times and it was killed. And then just, it was like, oh, and I was like. <laughs> That, I do feel like I came, I'm surprised I came across unscathed because I they, they guess they just knew enough that, yeah, it just didn't work tonight that they didn't like ban me from the show and I you know, ended up keep doing the show. I feel like I had that with one of my, I did Kimmel once and it was like that where I came off and and you don't know who to trust. You go like, did that go okay? Yeah. And everyone's like, that went great. And I'm like, I don't think it went great. I did a show, it's like live at the comedy store in London and they 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 got us there early to do a sound check did the sound check then i'm going on like 12th and they've been there for hours yeah and the mc who i don't think he meant any harm by this at all but he was just like our next act is gonna you're gonna notice that he's from a different place when he starts talking or something like that and it's like <laughs> mm, maybe don't say that <laughs> don't lay the maybe that is ground say that. maybe that's the grin <laughs> so i go up there and then of course now they're just like listening for the <laughs> and i was fucking, like that's your hook it was a i was realized i was bombing and i just was like I'm gonna just play to the camera. I told him I'm gonna play to the camera and act like I'm killing. Yeah. And I finished the set. And I was like, oh, I just like act like I was killing. But then these, all these comics came up to me. I'm like, that's gonna cut well. They're gonna edit that. <laughs> when they edit that, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> it's kind of nice to have the sport, but I mean, that's also like every one of them has been there on some level. So, but it was also the thing where people couldn't. Then someone said we couldn't hear you. It's like. I did a sound check. <laughs> I mean, it's not there, but they probably, the sound was probably bad. I mean, but just like, how often do you do a sound check for a TV show? And then, yeah. Like, do you feel like you're still learning as a comedian? Yeah, I mean, I do like to like occasionally go see a stand up. Like, it's usually, I mean, the one who I've seen the most in New York is Doug Stanhope when he comes down, I'll just go sit in the audience. I don't really watch a lot of stand-ups like yeah. when I'm in a club with them. I yeah. guess if I'm just kind of waiting for them, waiting to go on, I do, but I don't sit down. So, I mean, I often like to just watch someone and go, oh, that's that's what I do. That's kind of cool. Just right. like in general, that's what I do. And Or just seeing what they can get away with or what, oh, they're talking about this pretty dark subject Yeah, and they're pulling it off. But. I have that, the two people I try to see when they're in town are maria bamford and yeah, Doug uh, yeah those, she's she's the two of them she's just, from another planet good yeah. man yeah doug and doug is amazing because i mean both of them are amazing because they're fearless yeah yeah and doug is amazing i think because he's a hundred percent willing to lose the audience like watching stanhope watching bamford there's a there are few people who you watch and you go like oh yeah i I could learn from that. Yeah, or sometimes it's just like, not to be faux humble, but you just like, oh, man, I I ain't doing that. I, I wish <laughs> yes. I was, but I'm not doing that. Yeah. That's next level shit. And it, it is inspiring in a way, like, it's like, why don't I try to do that? Right. Well, not that I'm going to act do like Maria Bamford's style act, but. Right. But her level of like, just quality is just, and interestingness. What was your, um, what was your first job? Job job? Job job, yeah. Um, that was at a country club in Tamarack, Florida. This was a job of kind of maintaining the clay tennis courts. Like you'd 
drag them. You would get a golf cart with a brush behind it. Yeah. Just kind of drive and yeah, and smooth them out. Like, and I do it like six in the morning and then like four in the afternoon or something. And I remember it paid three fifty an hour, which was like well above minimum wage. Oh wow! It was a long time ago. Wow. So that I think that was my first job, and then I worked at McDonald's. Yeah. Do you work at McDonald's? I never worked at McDonald's. Really? I worked at Super Stop and Shop as a bagger. All right. Yeah. I worked at Albertsons. <laughs> as a bagger? Yeah. I think it's the only place I got fired from. Did you get fired? What'd you get fired for? I, it was not nothing like I did. Something. I think I had to go on vacation or I had to go away. And when I came back, I didn't have a job. So mm. I guess that's fired. But. Did you ever get fired? I've never talked to anybody as a comic who's been fired. Have you been fired off a week? I yeah, I was about to bring that up when you <laughs> when you started that question. I go, oh, I wonder if he's about to ask this. I um I was opening for Paul Mooney at uh at Caroline's oh, wow. and you know it was there wasn't like I wasn't being hated, but I certainly wasn't being loved. Yeah, and it wasn't like oh this crowd's turning on me, but it was clearly I wasn't there. They I wasn't what they wanted before. Yeah, and I just remember the Booker. Um, remember Jocelyn? Yeah, yeah. She kind of just came up to me. And I was like, "Yeah, I know." <laughs> kind of just, <laughs> oh my god, yeah, I know, Todd. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, ah. I don't even think she had to say this yeah, isn't working out. I wasn't like, "What do you mean?" I was like, "Yeah, let's let's." Oh my god. So I guess in that sense, I was fired. Did they pay you out? I don't remember. <laughs> I know. I'm always really. I'm always pretty diligent about making sure I get paid out. <laughs> they, but they probably they may probably did. The the crazy thing that you and I probably have in common because we worked Carolines uh -huh. a lot in, in that era was prom shows. You probably did prom oh, shows. God, I, I did prom shows. That was a, a a milestone for me when I said no more prom shows. <laughs> I'm going to give context to the yeah, listeners. Yeah. Okay, uh, this is the thing that I don't even think people can comprehend. Yeah. Which is at comedy clubs in New York City, there was a period of time, and maybe that period of time still exists, where the grown ups were trying to come up with something for their high school prom kids uh -huh. to go to that and didn't involve drinking. Perfect idea. Yeah. Comedy comedy nightclub. And yeah. so and so you and I both were would be booked on these shows where we're essentially performing for 16 year olds who like don't want to be there and also you would, you would go on at like three o'clock in the morning or something but literally your spot time you get an email that said 3 a.m right and or even later sometimes the spot time would say spot 3 30 a.m yeah, yeah. 3 45 a.m <laughs> and you're like it is yeah it's kind of like there are those times where you're like wow i where you just go i gotta say yes to everything or yeah and then I do remember, like, just doing one in particular where they're just like, I'm getting, sh they're yelling shit. It's like, I'm getting yelled at by a 17-year-old <laughs> who took a, a limo here. <laughs> and, like, for $75? I mean, actually, that sounds pretty good. So you want bits that you, you can help me with? or something? Yeah, theoretically, yeah. All right, well, one I've been doing that I've been kind of pulling off is a true story about I was on a flight, to, I think it was to Hawaii, and it was like 10 hours, and the guy sitting in front of me every five minutes wrapped both his hands around the back of his seat, <laughs> okay. and he was blocking my screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was kind of like, <laughs> and I'm not like a confrontational person, especially I have no idea what's on the other side, and he kept doing it, and then I was like, oh. I guess, and I, I said, well, may, at least I can get a picture of this for Instagram. <laughs> he's like literally these fingers over the screen. And I said, I'll, you know, I'll come up with a caption like blocking my view of 500 days of summer. <laughs> and it kept happening, it kept happening. The flight eventually lands, the doors open, paramedics rush on no. and start treating this guy. He'd no. been in some sort of agony the whole time. No. And then I, oh I mean, I ended by saying, but God. there's a happy ending. I didn't post the picture. Oh my God. <laughs> but it was, it was. That's a twisty one. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's a great, that's a great bit. I mean, have you done it on stage? Yeah, I've done it. And I've gotten it closer because at first it was hard to sort of explain what the guy's doing. But then I just said, you know, he wrapped his hands around. Right, the you seat. do the physicality. And then I said, he blocked my screen. Because just saying, I didn't know that they would understand that block my screen. I would always be like. Well, at the beginning, I was like, you know, there's a TV on the seat, now, and then it gets all clunky. Right. I just blocked my screen, and they always figured out. <coughs> I guess they know what I'm talking about. 
But yeah, so there's that one. That's I, a I, great. That's a great bit. I feel like what I. I mean, it's like the reason why I like your all your joke writing. It's like it's such an economical picture. Yeah. Like we we get the whole story. Yeah. Essentially, of like five hours condensed into like four sentences. Yeah. And it has so many turns to it. Yeah, I, I was pretty happy that I was able to pull that one off, and because I thought this one's going to be too rough to rough to make clear, and and I, and I sort of figured it out on some level. I guess it's pretty much done. Yeah. Unless you got anything for me? No, I mean, I, I, I mean, I guess the question is like, <laughs> is like if. <sighs> It's just, it's like what we were talking about earlier, like storytelling versus, versus like short jokes. It's like, yeah. you could extrapolate the whole thing out and have it be longer and go through your thought process through the whole thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, because there, it is a full long story. Uh huh. But as it is, it's so strong. It's interesting that audiences I found, I haven't done a ton of times, they'll either be like, they'll, once I say that paramedics are out, they'll be like, oh, Right. Or they'll start laughing. And I don't know which is better for my punchline, but right, it's kind of cool when I, they are upset and then I go, no, this, this is a happy ending. I, I didn't post the picture. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, there's that one. You want more? <clears throat> I love it. Yeah, hit me with more and then I'll throw some in mind. Um, well, there's one... Uh, I, I guess it's sort of working where I, I went to join a gym and I, I was taking a tour of a gym and the guy, you know, those people are always I, Weasley salespeople. And, yeah. and he's like, he's like, oh, we have 12 different locations. Every location has a pool except this one. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every location has a pool except this one. And I was just like, you're just, so you're just telling me great stuff that's at other gyms. <laughs> Uh, there's a great there's a great uh, gym in San Diego that has nine <laughs> pools uh, you're not going there either but you are going to the worst location of this, pool, <laughs> of this gym and then I do a thing about how he uh, he um, they was taken in the cubicle to seal the deal you know and he's like got this pre-printed list of membership plans like $900 he takes a pen and crosses it out and writes $700 oh my gosh, like I'm yes. supposed to go oh my god are there cameras in this place? <laughs> you just acted on a crazy impulse. <laughs> like, like, how stupid do you think? <laughs> but it kind of ends with, I'm just out of shape. I'm also stupid. <laughs> oh That's a little God. Brian Regan-y. But, um, so, I, I mean, I guess that one, it's not much more to that one. But. Yeah. No, that's the thing that's crazy about, <coughs> about gyms is that is that in my yeah in my adult life i've realized that gyms are the used car sales oh yeah they're of, definitely yeah because even if you sit there and they're like you're like i don't know it's like it's like twelve hundred dollars and and if you want some sessions it's a 900 extra <laughs> yeah i don't know all right i'll give you the sessions for free oh okay that didn't take much <laughs> i'm glad i hesitated four <laughs> seconds <laughs> And then That's you kind really of then like, once you sign up you go what if i just kept going what right if I just walked? right I'd be like, but yeah. it's like you need to go into gym negotiation with like nothing to lose, right? Right. Like it's almost like you need to yeah, go this into gym is so yeah. close to my apartment. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, oh. totally. But yeah, it's kind of like, can you just tell me, give me a price, and we'll do, we'll do it that way? It's yeah, like, it's a little dance we're doing. But yeah, you got some? No, that man. Yeah, no. I my <laughs> thing is, um, I was in a hotel and I was watching an ad for heartburn <clears throat> medication. And all I could think was that pizza looks so good. <laughs> I got to get some of that heartburn medication oh. brand pizza. Heart. I don't know if that's what they're getting at, but I was sold. <laughs> so th you're saying the heartburn commercial made you hungry for yeah, pizza? Yeah, it did. Yeah, and so it, it's based on a true experience. I was like, oh, yeah, that looks that's good. Funny. It's like, it's like it, the heartburn's just part of the deal. Yeah, I might get heartburn. But <laughs> yeah. I get pizza and heartburn. Yeah. And then I say, I'm always shocked when I see pizza uh, ads for pizza because I feel like we're, we're sold on pizza. Like, I think that all they need is just a, a half second of screen time that says, remember pizza. <laughs> and I'd be like, Oh, right. Yeah. I forgot about pizza. I love it. <laughs> and, uh, and then I, I, I say there's, there's, um, there's no ads for good pizza. Good pizza is confident in their work. 
Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, right, that's true. They're like, we're yeah, we're people will show up. We did the work. It's kind of like the restaurants where they have like a barker outside. We're yeah. like, come on in. You're like, you can't be a good restaurant. <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, I go. There's no, there's no ads for good things in general. There's no ads for Paris, but there are ads for New Hampshire. <laughs> like, come to New Hampshire. We got bad pizza. See, if that were my joke, I'd be like, you never see an ad for my comedy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's my style this is a completely just a premise but if you, i feel like people are can be pretty forgiving unless they think you're cutting a line <laughs> that's so funny then, then there's no mercy like because i remember times there's times i've been like because sometimes you go like a coffee shop and you see people standing like i can't tell if they're waiting for their order or they have an order yeah and if you make the move what are they, what are yeah. it's like all right this is yeah fun. it's gonna be all right yeah. Made a mistake. Yeah. Uh, not out to, uh, that's, I don't know if there's a joke there, but. No, I think that that's, I, that's an example of like the punchline is so strong. That it's like, I don't know how you follow it. Oh. You know what I mean? Like cutting the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's such yeah. a great, it's such an immediately identifiable <laughs> right. truism. Yeah, we'll put that, that's back burnering that one. Back burner. You got more? I'm, I, well, I'll say this, which is that I'm, I'm intimidated, like, you're throwing jokes at me and they're great. I'm intimidated by adding jokes because I feel like you like you're such a veteran, like brilliant joke writer that I'm like, oh, I don't wanna I don't wanna oh, like no, try I, to I, pitch I, on you, this. You can do that. You know what I mean yes. though? I mean I, I wouldn't let anyone do it, but I would let you do that. Aw. I um I wrote this. My wife and I do a lot of sexting. The other night, she wrote, the ants in the kitchen attack the English muffins. <laughs> and I wrote, man, I want to fuck you. And she wrote, I'm going to freeze the pumpernickel. And I knew what she meant. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it's a fun one. That's funny. Uh, yeah. She literally sent me a video. And maybe I'll include this. She literally sent me a video today of um, ants on... The honey on the honey that I just bought for, for my tea, for my tea. It was a video. A video. It was like there's an ants and she wrote there's an ants party. It's also funny. Like the, I'm glad. Like I was. I would have thought you were lying about that. <laughs> like she's here's evidence. Oh my god. So the last thing we do on the show is, is working out for a cause. Oh, yeah. Where if you have a nonprofit that you like to contribute to, we will contribute to them. Doctors Without Borders, which is, I know, it's not the most. That's a great one. Left field one, but That's they great. apparently do great Doctors work. Doctors Without so, Borders. So why That's not? great. Yeah, let's So we'll that. contribute to Doctors Without Borders. We'll link to them in the show notes, encourage people to contribute as well. And, uh, and we'll, I can't recommend all your specials that yeah, are on the YouTube. Yeah, the newest one is, uh, the new one is, it's called domestic short hair it's on youtube for free for free and it's great thank you it's fantastic and thanks for doing it thanks for having me i've wanted to do this for a while i waited so long to do this podcast i've, I've worked everything out <laughs> <laughs> is, that making, is that funny <laughs> it's called working it out right yeah yeah, yeah. it's called working you got out. me too late i've already like worked it. it all out all right you don't have to add that i like it that could be a bonus track mm -hmm.